Hello my friends, welcome to the new Magister Klaus video. Today we have Sunday and uh, after one week break I'm going to uh, review another book that you have chosen for uh, from the three that I have offered for you. And we have a clear winner. The clear winner is uh, a book uh, quite famous, quite popular between the occultists, mostly the modern uh, occultists, uh, Necronomicon by Simon. <laughs> well, uh, this is a famous grimoire, uh, contemporary grimoire, uh, I will get later to it, but it become quite popular in the US and also in the, I would say also in the Europe and other uh, countries um, probably in the 70s and uh, before I will speak a little bit about uh, uh, the book itself I do have the electronic copy so I'll be not showing the direct book but only like the the pictures and uh, some images of it uh, I have bought a copy on the Amazon and it can be bought for really fairly good price it's I think it's like seven or eight dollars the electronic copy and uh, and the uh, and the real copy paperback i think it's also not so expensive so mass paperback i think you can buy for less than eight dollars and uh, of course there are also collector's editions hardback amazon uh, is offering hardback uh, for fifty dollars which is a little bit quite steep but we know that Currently, these books, all occult books, are quite expensive. So, if the if the if you are planning to work with the book more, use it on your during your rituals and so on, then sometimes hardback is even better to have it. Uh, does not mean that I don't work with the Lovecraftian or Necronomicon magic current so much as I do have only this electronic uh, version. But uh, uh, yes, uh, probably. I was thinking maybe because that maybe later on I can also uh, have this hardback edition. So what is Necronomicon and who is Simon? <laughs> so before we ask these questions I would like to say a little bit about the history of, the, of this. Uh, general understanding is that the Necronomicon written by Simon. Simon is probably a pseudonym. It is a pseudonym of and uh, uh, of a famous occultist, uh, an historian of, of the occult. Uh, it is believed that the author of the book is Mr. Peter Lavenda. Uh, but uh, Mr. Peter Lavanda declined the authorship of the book. He just said that uh, he is responsible only for the foreword in the, of the book and the rest of the book is genuine, uh, genuine uh, transcription from, from Greek. Uh, from the Greek monks that uh, even were able to to have the original Arabic version written by Med Arab. Uh, uh, the name of the Arab is not mentioned in the book, but we know that this is the reference to the to the works of uh, Mr. Lovecraft, a famous author from the from the twenties of the twentieth century, uh, Med Arab Abdul Al Hazret. Uh, who should have been uh, the original uh, author of the book. But this is just the story. Uh, the book is written by some pseudonym by Mr. Simon. Maybe it was Peter Lavenda, we think that he was, but okay, he will, he's just saying that it's a, it's a foreword. What does it represent? What does it mean? Um, generally, we think that this Necronomicon by Simon is a new book. Uh, it is a very sophisticated, sophisticated, uh, practically a hoax, but a very good hoax. Uh, it uh, contains uh, a lot of sigils, workings with uh, the ancient, uh, so-called ancient gods that are definitely from the Sumerian, uh, Sumerian area, Sumerian origin. Uh, they are mentioning of these old gods like uh, Marduk, uh, Eresh Kigal, Inanna, but also others in the book. Uh, the, um, it is a combination of uh, 
say fiction, fiction heavily influenced by an author Howard Phillips Lovecraft. It is influenced also by um, Aleister Crowley and I would say also the occult knowledge of uh, related to the gods of Canaan and it's it's some kind of mixture. So we can say that book Necronomic, the book is uh, uh, constructed, not genuine, but those that work with the book say that it, when you work with it, it's like a pseudo magical current. But if you, uh, if you work with it, you can get a good results. This mystery is Simon. Let's say that it's not Mr. Lavenda. <laughs> uh, later on, wrote also other books uh, like Gates of Necronomicon and additional books to this current. Um, it's very popular because it con uh, the word Necronomicon or the book uh, is uh, mentioned first in the works of H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft was a short essay novelist that became quite famous uh, in the 20s of the 20th century. And I believe that uh, if you are a fan of uh, like weird fiction, horrors, uh, it's practically, practically impossible that you haven't at least uh, uh, heard about some works of, of H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft uh, was a main author of the uh, of the books containing horror like uh, call of tulhu mountains of madness uh, he he wrote a lot of short uh, uh, danwich horror a lot of novels that were quite popular in the in the 20s uh, and he is considered as a father of of horror fiction uh, that prevailed until modern times and in his books uh, and uh, mostly novels, short novels. The book Necronomicon as this very dark grimoire uh, appears. This book, uh, if, even if you know these horrors like uh, Evil Dead and so on, it all goes from the, from the Lovecraftian fiction. Uh, the book is considered in his book uh, as an old Arabic work. Uh, written by this uh, uh, mad uh, Arab Abdul Al Hazret, and uh, Simon's book, Simon's Necronomicon, pretends that it is the same book, uh, but uh, we do not have any historical references of the book Necronomicon. It's not the only magical grimoire that is mentioned in H.P. Uh, Lovecraft's uh, um, works. Uh, he, he created like uh, a lot of uh, pseudo grimoires that the characters in the novels are reading and later on like uh, are cursed by the Vermis Mysteries and uh, so many, so many other books. Uh, uh, I would really recommend to uh, you to, to read this, uh, this fiction if you haven't had uh, done that already. I can say I think I have read his all, uh, all of his works except of his letters because he was quite a prolific author and he wrote a lot of things but uh, it is considered now a classics of the horror literature and for someone like me who is not native in English it's a rich, uh, uh, rich uh, source of uh, learning new and very specific English words because his vocabulary was, uh, uh, he was a genius. He really was able to write uh, in, in this beautiful makeover style. So uh, um, I uh, would like to, before I move to the book, uh, there is even like very uh, there is a school or philosophical school or movement of uh, uh, what practically Lovecraftian work and uh, represents. It's co so called uh, cosmicism. Uh, cosmicism means, and Lovecraft was uh, like uh, proposing this in his books, that uh, humanity is relatively new, and it is like compared to the to the uh, old. Uh, uh, like to the to the eons of uh, of universe, and it's uh, practically a very new and young race, intelligent race, and uh, in uh, in reality, like in see, and there are uh, like several dimensions and so on. There are other intelligent species 
uh, that are much more older, extremely powerful, like unimaginably more powerful than humanity. And they either don't even recognize us because they have power of the gods. Or if they recognize us, they think that we are practically like insects. And uh, that these, these ancient entities, one day, if summoned through this, 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 this book of uh, cosmic horror, can enter our reality, which will mean like total annihilation of the humanity. And uh, 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 although Philip Lovecraft was uh, not an occultist, he was only an author, he was not doing like magical works and so on, but he just wrote these. Uh, many occultists later on were inspired by these, uh, by these uh, visions. For example, Aleister Crowley as well. Cosmicism as such, I would also say, has, is closely related to another philosophical or religionistic movement of the ancient times, so-called Zoroastrism. So it means that uh, in this old ancient, uh, some of the old uh, uh, ancient uh, cultures uh, believed in uh, uh, the uh, the conflict of the of the uh, universal opposites of good and evil, and uh, that this evil uh, that there is a duality uh, of the of the energies. Uh, fighting for the for the prevalence in the in the in, uh, and to define the law of space and the universe, some good and evil entities, and in his uh, later on uh, after Lovecraft uh, uh, like uh, was uh, not active anyone uh, anyone anymore. More authors were trying to build this myth that they called so called Cthulhu mythos uh, about these stories, the, the position of humankind compared to this uh, to these entities so they are like families of gods they are ancient ones these are really like cosmic horrors uh, though, that practically do not uh, recognize humanity or uh, uh, if we would even look at them we would become insane because they are so powerful and then they are like uh, like ancient gods uh, gods like Inanna, Ishtar, Marduk uh, that um, are more resident in the in the earth in our earth they are like millions of years old but they are still not so old as these ancient uh, multiverse entities that practically represent uh, uh, this alien dimensions entities like yok sotot and uh, nialatotep he even creates the names of the of this of this ancient uh, species and there was a war between the old gods and the ancient ones the ancient ones uh, although they are stronger somehow they were too old and they were banished from the earth and uh, later on these these old gods uh, f fell asleep they are sleeping also the ancient ones want to return back to the earth and then there are these strange books that through which you can get power that uh, but uh, it can bring like chaos and uh, this anti-cosmic order uh, to the world so that's the history of the necronomicon like in the in the lovecraftian books and uh, it was so popular that in the 70s mr simon somehow found this uh, this this book that practically is not never existed but was written as a, as a very professional hoax and uh, we may think that it might be mr lavenda okay and uh, uh, it was considered at first as a hoax as a as a book that somehow was found out like that from the greek translated to the english and it contains all of these stories of this uh, mad arab he doesn't say abdul al hazret as in, as in as in lovecraftian books but it contains these stories and the book uh, is uh, i would say when i was like uh, looking into it more it is quite interesting the book starts quite nicely. Uh, it's a foreword uh, that uh, contains a lot of like how to pronounce these these old Sumerian words, how to uh, work with so-called uh, gates through which you can enter these realms of the ancient gods, 
and it speaks a lot about the history or, or about the so-called war between the ancient ones and the old ones. Uh, it is uh, and the beginning uh, contains a lot of interesting, even from the modern, like even if it is a hoax, contains a lot of interesting occult material comparisons, like uh, the names of the of the seven uh, Sumerian planets, a planet uh, related to planetary magic, sphere of planets, uh, and the names of the gods uh, that, that sound and are practically like sound and valid. And uh, it contains also a lot of specific spells written in, translated from the Sumerian, but uh, you can use this for your workings. Uh, the book is full of warnings that this is like a true necronomicon. You can work with the entities, but it can cause you a lot of harm. And uh, then, uh, uh, it, then it continues with this story of the uh, of the mad Arab that travels in the desert and uh, by some coincidence find out a secret ritual in the desert of uh, the worshippers of Tiamat. Uh, we know that Tiamat is a, is a dragon goddess. It is a symbol of the of the of the destruction of the chaos. So these these worshippers are like trying to invoke this anti-cosmic uh, power and he is uh, struck by the fear he's, as he sees that he has the visions and later on he writes this book uh, to his son uh, it's practically these these stories of the old grimoires like Abraham Elin book of magic or uh, the history of king solomon that tries to invoke demons to know these uh, this wisdom so also this mad arab is trying to invoke the old names of the old gods and uh, trying to en enter the gates and there are sigils of the gates they are uh, sigils of the demons and gods uh, lilith and, and things like that so uh, it contains a lot of working material for you how to call these names and so on but uh, although it's like uh, the names are like really taken from the uh, from the history like uh, gilgamesh and so on marduk some are just like very artificially created by the Simon. You will not find any other sources for that. Some rituals are, they look like if you are speaking Sumerian, but it's not Sumerian. We, uh, or, uh, and uh, 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 then he very cleverly puts in these names of the of the old ones, this Azatot and, and others like Yoksotot uh, that, that are in this uh, Lovecraftian uh, story. So the book, uh, so the whole book looks uh, like a serious material and it's written like perfectly perfect grimoire uh, um, the thing was fun until it stopped to be fun for many practitioners because although this was a hoax so many people thought that the, in the 70s 80s that the book is real and they started to practice these things. They, they, we call it now like Lovecraftian magical current. There are several magical currents like uh, Luciferianism, Goetia, Voodoo, and other currents of magic and or school of magic, you can call them. And this Lovecraftian current become very popular at that time. And uh, the book says always these warnings, this script calls you like insanity and so on. And uh, the experiences of the people become become real. <laughs> they really got these, these strange dreams, uh, and um, some would say that it's out of suggestion or something. But I would say that, uh, that the, we, as a, as, a, as a magicians, we have the power through our will to manifest the reality. Gods like this, this, this god egregores were worshipped at these old times. The uh, as humans have decided the way how to uh, worship them we have created traditions we have created the sigils maybe they have been somehow we have been somehow inspired by it but the sigils uh, for example are new and have also like uh, rules how they are created so we created the rituals we even created probably the names of the gods or maybe even the gods some of them uh, they represented uh, powers of chaos, of weather, of death, of, uh, of fertility. And they named them somehow. 
and uh, and later on when thousands or hundreds of generations and people were worshiping these gods this astral energy become real i believe a lot of deities are are created this way so if uh, thousands of occultists in the 70s were taking these semi-real names and started to work with the current through their power through their offerings they created something very special but is this not truth also all true also for other grimoires where and the old grimoires like grimoire verum or grand grimoire or uh, or uh, lesser key of solomon hoaxes at that time as well we know that many sigils and these goetia demons are practically just the mispronounced names of the old deities divinities demons and and many of these names were probably before like egyptian gods that were demonized during the in the middle ages in the renaissance or forgotten and uh, the the people that were working or trying to invoke these old deities thought about them as demons and uh, these these entities these these spirits that we are now working with even now people create these 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 uh, rituals and uh, some even worship like uh, like demon letters uh, these entities what i think is strange but they do and uh, they are different from the from the from the gods of the past but they are they have probably been the gods before so if we create something new, I think it's the, in the human power it is to create a new form of magic. Although it's new, although it has only like 40 or 50 years, uh, I think that even Mr. Simon was not expecting that this will get to the, uh, to the level of uh, where it is now. They are really serious. M many people will say, oh, it's just a hoax. Yes, it was a hoax but the book can work although it's a new sigil although it was created somehow uh, many people say that for example lovecraft was also that kind of person that he just uh, that although he was not an occultist he was somehow influenced his mind he, he always writes about very strange dreams he's uh, i think uh, he he had uh, of course a lot of depressions and so on and problems it was very he was a very complicated person and he was writing these strange uh, stories about these words beyond words words beyond beyond words these fantastic landscapes that might have been just his imagination or maybe it was just a glimpse of something that really exists so i will leave it up to you whether the book is a hoax or not i believe it's a ho it was created by by simon uh, but uh, anyway it can work and if it works is it a good book it's dangerous if you work with the book, uh, it contains a lot of dark rituals because the author of the book wanted it to be dark. It should have been this Necronomicon, I think, on the page. I think on the uh, it has like around uh, 250 pages, and there are even these these crazy things there, like uh, uh, because it wants to emulate the history of the of the of the Canaanites and Sumerians. There are even human sacrifices in the in the book, uh, uh, which caused uh, a lot of heat for the book. Uh, later on in the 70s and even later on the book uh, was uh, many time like uh, attacked by by by, the, by 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 priest by religion that this is like a, that uh, it uh, affected a lot of uh, negatively even the uh, satanic movement of of mr lave uh, because it uh, the book speaks for example about these human sacrifices so uh, those that uh, practice the Necronomicon, maybe only some parts of it, of course, were alleged that they are practically worshipping uh, uh, devil, Satan, uh, and even are practically able to do these horrendous things. And as you know, even in our current times, we always find people that 
probably should not work with the occult or they take it like in a very strange way. So this happened also in the 90s uh, in the US, uh, maybe some of you remember or know or you have read, there was like a, a case of uh, Rod Farrell, he was a cult leader and uh, uh, that was really influenced by occultism and he, he, he committed murders and uh, uh, he uh, said that he was also working with the Necronomicon uh, so definitely this was like uh, the person with uh, um, that was practically influenced by this but was also mentally unstable the person was playing role playing games like vampire the masquerade and so on but later he become a cow leader believing that the demon lord Vasago oh, he called him Vesago uh, said to him that he should do these things and yes he did so yes the book might have caused or influenced some unstable individuals uh, but nevertheless now maybe in these times the book might be even like forbidden but you know in the 80s 90s uh, maybe the, the liberty of the press was different and uh, the book uh, can be bought uh, until today uh, and uh, if you go if you take it like uh, uh, in a tongue-in-cheek you know uh, you can find a lot of interesting information there mostly about the planets uh, a little bit of history of the Sumerians uh, the, the sigils look genuine but they are they are just created to look like that but for some people that work with this uh, this book or others uh, from the Necronomicon uh, or from the from the Lovecraftian magic current, uh, it works. But the entities are really dark. Uh, if you if you connect, for example, with uh, Nialatotep, like this shadowy presence, like this agent of the ancient gods that looks like human if he wants, but uh, he is like influencing. Uh, a lot of uh, negative things in the world because you want to erupt this chaos in the world and the more chaos there is the more the gates of the uh, to the ancient ones are being opened so if you really want to invoke it for some kind of uh, uh, gnosis sorcery uh, uh, it can come with very strange and dark visions and you can be really afraid these entities are not friendly it is not like that like in goetia that the demon can teach you they can but they they at least at least those that work with them have say that these entities have their own agenda uh, many of them are vampiric uh, even the book like necronomical mentions this lilith uh, as a demons uh, not just one lilith but the the, the the class of demons so you might feel very tired of it there is an entity for example Leox Sotot which is like a, it's a imbecile entity that does not even know or even Azatot these entities does not even know that they exist they are so big and they uh, like for example Leox Sotot represents uh, the 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 multiverses he is the he can change the parallel reality so if you would like to work with this entity and you would like to change your life you can maybe wake up next day and you will be in in the same room in the same place but the reality might be a little bit different so maybe some uh, things you will just switch to, to uh, if you know this theory of super strings and so on this is something that this entity can do to you but you can get also into the crazy reality and you can so uh, uh, people work like that or there is like a cosmic uh, the oldest entity this this image uh, this uh, proto chaos called Ezetot which is uh, which is uh, also insane it's like a swirl of galaxies or, and if you see him you will get crazy because you will recognize that you are just like a speck of dust uh, compared to the realities or uh, these insane energies that our multiverses are created of so these type of energies you can work with or uh, you connect with the ancient gods or even extraterrestrial extraterrestrial entities uh, Lovecraft was uh, writing about extraterrestrials 
uh, he created several species that were in the earth before humanity uh, was uh, practically uh, was still like humanity was not existing or this the whole sapiens uh, where uh, the, the, the humanity was just we were not humans that maybe we were uh, just uh, something else and uh, mm, so they were here before they are sleeping they don't like humanity that it's expanding in the earth and they do strange experiments with us so all of these things you can connect with called the migo yeah, this is the, they are the, uh, or my go uh, some types of uh, entities that, or extraterrestrials that hates us and that experiment on us so you might you might say that this is just the weird fiction for some it's not but do you want to connect these things yeah so um, the book uh, is considered dangerous uh, those few practitioners, I tried to work a little bit with the current, but I felt really that it takes a lot of energy from me. The dreams were real, the things came, but uh, I feel that this is... Uh, it's like when you work with necromancy. Sometimes you don't want to invoke the spirit of the... Of the of a crazy person or, or of, the path, of the murderer into your temple. You know, like uh, the old someone who was killing people, and you will invoke his spirit into into your house. Mm, no, so so I uh, uh, I caution you towards working with this. Yeah, and it's all about the power of imagination. If you think that this is a hoax, probably it will be a hoax for you because you will. Uh, but if you think that you can work with these entities, our mind is so powerful that you can maybe connect with something. Okay. Friends, uh, I, I, the book contains everything like this, sigils, forms, hymns, chants, uh, uh, very uh, cleverly created uh, hoax, but so was a lesser key of Solomon or Grimoire of Verum, so it might be real at the end. I give this book four stars because I think it's so well done that it deserves four stars. Uh, why I don't give five? Well, it's a hoax. <laughs> so I hope you liked the video and uh, I'm looking forward to see you next week. Take care.